recording. Yeah, I think we are, aren't we? Can you see me? Yes, you can. Hello. Morning, everybody. Yes, it's dark and I'm illuminated. <coughs> um, there is no B-roll. There is no B-roll because, well, it was dark. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm at Waterhead uh, on the shore of Windermere. The draw here at Windermere is early morning misty conditions and um, uh, little boats and their reflections all bobbing along, or not bobbing along hopefully, um, but looking very spooky and very ethereal uh, in the mist. You can see that the moon is out above me as I was driving down here. I was driving through uh, bands of mist and fog um, and uh, now I've got here um, I can just about make out some boats uh, over there in the semi-darkness um, but um, I'm literally waiting I'm just going to swap arms a moment uh, I'm literally waiting for uh, light levels to raise a little bit um, I think at the risk of sounding like I'm complaining and I'm not um, I think this may be slightly too much mist um, we shall see uh, at the minute um, I can see um, trees and various shapes all shroud shrouded in murk uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get to see the uh, the fells beyond uh, which is a bit of a shame um, but we'll see um, if the uh, mist levels um, drop a little bit so I see something of the um, surrounding scenery that would be fantastic um, I'd love to say I'm on my own uh, I'm not on my own um, I've had at least one little boat chug across the water in front of me and then disappear off into the murk um, so uh, there are um, at least people around um, I've also moved a little bit down from the car park uh, down the lake shore um, which is an interesting experience by torchlight uh, there you go, look, you can make out the light levels behind me just ra rising slightly. Um, uh, m more than anything, to get away from the ambient light. Um, so the road is, oh, it's a distance behind me, I don't know, 25, 30 metres behind me. Uh, and of course, everybody's got their main beam on and all the rest of it. And I didn't want that uh, appearing in the image. So I've come a ways a little bit. I can see in front of me three, maybe even four. Uh, little boat. It's a bit difficult to tell with this um, uh, spotlight uh, head torch um, shining in my face. But yeah, what a beautiful morning to be out. It's a shame you can't see it. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to figure out a way of uh, you being able to see what I can see. So by the power of technology Let's just give this a try. So what I've been trying to do is take some ridiculously long exposures uh, on my own camera uh, just to try and reveal um, what can be seen in front of me. As you can see behind me, light levels are now starting to rise and rise quite quickly as well, which in some respects is a good thing because now I can see what I'm doing. So there you can quite clearly see uh, three little boats uh, all neatly in a row, all roughly facing in the same direction. Um, this one here is uh, it's bobbing around quite a lot I think because it's uh, quite a bit smaller and than the uh, the other two vessels you can see the mast waving back and forth so I have actually taken uh, a series of images uh, again just sort of using ridiculously long exposures um, by that I mean sort of you know you're looking upwards of 60 seconds um, just to see what I could get um, quite blue, quite ethereal, um, almost pinhole maybe in appearance, I don't know. Um, but this is certainly what I came here to witness um, and to try and capture in the form of photographs and it is definitely what I'm getting. What I could just do with now is a little bit of nicey nicey over there, uh, but I'm not very sure I'm going to get it. If I tilt the camera right up, there is the moon, and the moon is looking exceptionally hazy. 
so I am pretty sure I'm not going to get uh, any golden light but so what as I've said on previous videos sometimes it's just the act of being out here an act of enjoying it uh, and let me see how that I just took a frame whilst I was touching it see that or not but yeah it's blue it's smoky yeah everything that I expected it to be now what we want is a bit of glow in order to uh, just I, I don't know maybe a touch of warmth um, a touch of wow maybe as well uh, into uh, a spooky and ethereal image. moving down the shore a little bit so uh, there you go you can see behind me uh, the light level is uh, increasing quite rapidly um, sunrise is about still about half three quarters an hour away so um, I'm quite surprised actually by the amount of ambient light that there is around but uh, it has its blessings doesn't it so whilst I've um, uh, been killing a little bit of time uh, hoping for some golden light um, I've had a quick wander down the shoreline that way uh, away from the boats just to see if there was anything else uh, and there isn't uh, there is absolutely nothing um, just shoreline and murk um, I then came back here uh, and uh, I've been playing with portrait compositions of uh, the one of the smaller boats that's in front of me um, let me just show you um, again by the power of technology uh, the sort of thing that uh, I've been trying to capture so here we go here's a tip for you when you're shooting in near darkness and you can do it flip that screen round um, I'm quite lucky with this camera that I can do that and I've also got an electronic EVF there you go look you see it glowing in there it just means that uh, at at night or uh, when the light levels are very very low uh, your um, eyes are not being blinded by this uh, you know frighteningly bright large screen um, you know you can close one eye uh, and uh, look through the EVF um, but it's only one eye that's actually had to adjust to the brightness in the EVF not both um, it works for me anyway it means that uh, I'm not um, having to cope with uh, my eyes getting used to uh, a bright uh, screen so that's what uh, uh, my I was trying to bright, lower the brightness down there we go that's a little bit better so that's a, a live view um, of that little boat uh, and just previously it actually wasn't as uh, prominent as that so that's what I managed to capture. Now you can see that the camera's white balance that's captured uh, a lot of the blue light that you're getting at this time of day. And I love this graduation where it goes from deep blue up to almost very, very pale grey. Um, that's a good contender for a black and white I reckon. Um, so I've had a play with that. I actually quite like uh, that interpretation. Uh, let me just check the big screen proper oh well, that's because I'm over the eyepiece um, and you'll note that um, the uh, boat has got some negative space in front of it and that's really really important um, it just doesn't look right it doesn't look balanced if you don't do something like that so what am I getting I'm getting an exposure oh, it's not so bad now 1.6 seconds uh, and the histograms uh, I could probably push it more 
uh, to the right if I chose, but um, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it at that because I quite like that. If I want to see a black and white version, let's do that and that and that. There we go, and that's what it would look like in black and white. Yeah. And I'm liking that. I'm liking that quite a lot. I think though it could do with a punch of contrast. So where's contrast? It's there. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I've already got it on at the maximum that the camera will allow. Okay, that's fine. Never mind. Oh, what other options have I got there? Then? Picture mode, monochrome, monochrome, monochrome color, color filter, graduation. Sharpness. Mm, okay, maybe not. Right. That's a black and white view. Check focus. Manually focusing, of course. Uh, let's back the exposure back a little bit. There we go. Lovely. Oh, I didn't put the self timer on. Naughty boy, Hugh. Lovely. Now we'll just check it. Beautiful. I am liking that a lot. Now we check the histogram again just to make sure that generally it looks alright, which it does. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. One of the other things to do um, is remove all of this gumph, which is quite handy just to just to check the frame. Um, I don't know whether you've noticed there, but the boat has moved. It's actually swung round a little bit, so it's pointing more at us. And the difference that makes. Just a little tweak. So it was more or less there. And all I'm going to do is move it there. I'm also getting a hint of a, a line in the background. I don't know whether that's just the other side of the lake or whatever. I don't know, but I'm liking it. So let's check focus again. That's looking good. Yeah, that's looking really, really nice. Really, really nice. Yep, very, very glad that I came here today. In fact, I'm, I'm more playing with that little boat in the middle of the viewfinder than I am all three, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. But I'm going to have to go for all three because they're here. So I think this um, little boat over here uh, has had its day, it's had its moment of glory uh, and it's, uh, it's time to move on. Uh, I mentioned right at the beginning of the video that um, I'd walked the shoreline a little bit, which obviously I did in the dark and by the light of a head torch. So I'm actually now, I can see a little bit better. I'm going to walk back in the direction of the car park. Um, just if anything, just to actually be able to see uh, what else is out there. Um, the promise of golden light didn't quite happen, um, but do you know what? I'm not really all that bothered uh, about that. The uh, That little boat more than made up for it. Um, worth noting, um, although I put my camera in black and white mode, um, I'm uh, shooting in uh, RAW plus JPEG, uh, so Although I'm catching, capturing a black and white JPEG, the RAW is still in full colour and I can do whatever I want with that uh, RAW file, which is good. So now I'm just wandering past, there's a boathouse that I had a, a nosy in by the light of my head torch on the way through. I can see some more little yachts or boats. There's a little stream or something running into the water just here. Oop, excuse me, just here. 
Ugh. Try not to get my feet too wet. It's a little bit chilly to have wet feet. Yeah. Now oh, there's the, the building I parked next door to, which is all good. Right. Let's wander back up to that building and have a look. Let me take you with me. So having had a bit of a wander down the shoreline, uh, back towards where I parked, um, I have to be perfectly honest with you, I think the um, that little boat that I was playing with earlier is probably the more photogenic, although now these two are turned towards me, they're quite photogenic as well. Um, but I found this uh, handsome little craft um, if I just move to the view that the camera is looking at, wait for it to focus. So again, I'm singling it out, it's all on its own. Uh, it's relatively still as well, but I love the sweep of that mast. Um, it almost looks like it's moving, I know it isn't, but it almost looks like it is. What I could really do with though is a little bit of separation between the bow and the, uh, and the buoy, but it is so so still I really don't think I'm going to get uh, anything uh, like that so usual usual process here uh, I'm focusing like so manually histogram looks good two second timer and then Final check of the histogram to make sure it looks all right. Oops, which it does. Uh, now look, in the time that it's taken me to do that, look how uh, these two have moved. That is quite incredible. Even though there's hardly a breath of wind, I could feel a very, very, very soft breeze just sort of caressing my face but uh, really it's uh, it's not doing a huge amount now that blue one that's facing me but this white one over here isn't and when I looked at it previously both of them were facing and I quite liked the uh, the symmetry in the geometry oof say that when you've had a few So folks, having uh, waited a good 20 minutes for those two boats to line up uh, and they're still, they're still turning which is really, really frustrating. There you go, I just grabbed another frame because they're now both pointing that way ever so slightly, almost like three, a uh, three quarter view. Um, what was quite uh, interesting was um, when I was manually focusing the uh, the camera zooms in on the focus point and when it's zoomed in and it's a I think it's a 10 times digital zoom um, you could actually physically see the boat move so you knew the direction in which it was turning um, and I've only noticed that in the last few minutes and that's definitely something to uh, watch out for when I'm in this position again uh, but the Sun is well and truly up uh, now uh, and uh, that's it any promise of golden color has gone um, if I know this place, it will stay like this now till I run about half past nine, <coughs> um, something like that, and then all of a sudden uh, the sun will burn it off quite quickly. But um, breakfast is calling. Uh, I think a shower is calling as well because I'm quite uh, cold. Uh, be good to warm up a little bit. Uh, so from a uh, misty and murky uh, but very atmospheric uh, waterhead. 
on the shores of Lake Windermere. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, I hope you've uh, found this little exploration uh, useful. Um, if you've enjoyed it, uh, please do consider uh, hitting the subscribe button, um, which is uh, down below. Uh, there's also a little bell button alongside it. Uh, do consider clicking that as well. That will then notify you of when new content is added to this channel. Uh, I'm aiming to upload something at least once a month. I don't get out often enough uh, to, uh, to do it more often, but once a month, around about the 22nd, 23rd of the month, um, I should be uploading. Uh, at least then you'll be notified. You don't have to uh, remember. So thank you once again. And uh, until the next one, enjoy your photography. See you soon. Take care. Bye now.